Hello YouTubers and welcome to another edition of Fossil News, where old news is good news. I might use that again, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, we are going to be looking today once again at recent published discoveries in the fossil world. And we've got some great stuff for you. We're going to look at them from the oldest to the newest. That is the fossils from the oldest to the newest, not necessarily discoveries. But it doesn't matter, it's only been the last month or so. Anyway, forget it. Let's go straight to Western, well, even Western Australia, which is a long way away from me. But over there we have had a couple of researchers, um, David Wasey of the University of Western Australia and Martin D. Brazia of the University of Oxford. And they have made a discovery. Yes, the oldest fossils confirmed living matter in the world. 3.4 billion year old uh, microfossils of bacteria from that time. Now, there have been other finds of around about 3.5, 3.6 billion years ago, but these were kind of footprints, no real confirmation of living matter, but just look like it, so we can still assume. But these are a confirmation, 3.4 billion year old bacteria. Okay, so um, they've been looking within the cell walls of these using smart technology. Uh, they've obviously got one of them special phones that I don't understand. Um, and analyse the composition of the material within the fossil cell walls. Uh, they found carbon, sulphur, nitrogen, nitrogen and phosphorus. And um, of course carbon and nitrogen are common in all life forms. What did these things live on? Well, sulphur, sulphur compounds. Um, they used that for energy. Today, creatures use oxygen. But they were using sulphur for that energy. And um, also they found in the area, which they would expect to, um, apparently, is uh, fool's gold, you know, pyrites. Um, I've got a bit here, it's, it's common enough. I've even got one in my pocket. So um, anyway, that's it. We've found uh, these ancient bacteria that lived on sulphur. What was the world like at that time though? Well, the moon was much closer to the earth. The tides were mu that much greater. There wasn't much land, probably the odd little island, as it were, with these tides sweeping over them. And uh, it would have been a methane-rich environment, no oxygen, as I say, there would have been no plants about. Methane-rich and uh, you would also find the very warm waters, around about 40 to 50 degrees in the sea, iron-rich seas. Anyway, so it was a totally different world. We couldn't have survived there, but for these little buggers, it was heaven. Or at least Eden, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, on to the next one, because we've got, got to crack on, but fascinating stuff. And uh, I'll go straight on to the next one in a sec. Okay, we're going to whiz forward in time now to the Jurassic period, which is still a very long time ago. In fact, we're going to go back to 160 million year ago fossils. This is a period around about 100 million years before dinosaurs even became extinct. And we have found an exciting new creature. And uh, here it is. Ah, Jeremiah sinensis. Right, Jeremiah sinensis is a mammal. And it's a very small mammal, only a little thing, very cute, really could have been quite cuddly, but it had little sharp teeth. Probably it ate, ate insects, in fact, seems likely, lived in giant fern trees, these giant fern forests of the Jurassic. Um, but here is the exciting thing about Jeremiah sinensis. Jeremiah sinensis is a eutherian. Ooh, I can see you thinking, what the hell's that? Placental mammals. Placental mammals are what we are. We are placental mammals, um, also bats to dolphins, all those that give life, um, give birth to live young. Not egg layers like the monotremes. Um, they, you've got the duckbill platypus and things like the echidna. Okay, and you, they're not marsupials. Uh, marsupials, of course, do give birth, but they then nurture the baby outside of the body. Eutherians were believed, uh, the, first, the oldest fossil we have was 125 million years ago of the first sort of Eutherian. 
However, 35 million years before that, we had found this fossil, um, Duramaya sinensis. And that is quite exciting. It means that the split between the monotremes and, um, and the marsupials and the eutherians all happened way back there in the early Jurassic. And that's a great find. It used to be thought that after the dinosaurs became extinct, uh, most of the mammals just exploded out. Um, all the different types from the, like the monotremes, etc. But um, it was all set in place way back during the dinosaur times in this Jurassic period. These mammals were quite happily running about already. Quite a lot of them ending up as lunch, no doubt, for whatever was living around. Um, we often thought they were hiding just in burrows, but of course the tree canopies as well, uh, at least these fern tree canopies, would have been excellent places for them to hide. And it's quite an exciting find. They came from China, this comes from China, obviously it wasn't China then, but a lot of interesting fossils are now coming out of China, especially the northwestern area. And it seems every week now there's another find, Chinese find. It's great that the Chinese are now into fossils. Um, it used to be a, just a little industry before where they used to try and vlog them to foreigners. But now there's a lot of people into it and the paleontology over there is excellent. Um, so there we are, Duramaya sinensis. Our sort of great, 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 etc. for 160 million years. Cousin or aunt or ancestor. It's difficult to tell, but we know that particular group was about and happening at that time. Fabulous stuff. So let's get on to the next one. I love Duramaya sinensis. It's my presentation of the week or month or whenever I'm doing the video. Um, anyway, on to the next one, quick. Okay, we're gonna skip forward in time once more, now to 20 million years ago, where um, in Uganda, we have found, or at least not me, nothing to do with me, but Ugandan and French scientists have found the fossil of a new ape, or at least, I say a new ape, if there was partial remains found back in 1950 of Ugandapithecus major, but they've now found a fair proportion of a skull of one of these creatures as well, and it puts new light upon where the apes, at the period where they were in trees of course, down to uh, modern day, it's put another new light onto a species of ape that was around at that period of time. If we're looking back into, into apes, if we had a common ancestor with the chimpanzee somewhere around five to seven million years ago. If you're looking for a common ancestor with a gorilla, for instance, you'd have to go back about 11 million years. Uh, back even further still, and you're finding uh, a common ancestor with us and things like the orangutan. So, um, 20 million years ago, this was uh, another ape of that period before the diversity of modern standing apes and, of course, um, more the ground dwellers and, and the orangutan, etc. It's probably from that sort of period. However, it's a fascinating find. Um, can't report much else on it, just to say there's another one. Uh, there are so many species of fossil ape now, it's, it's, we often get blase and don't even report them, but uh, there you go. As, as I'm speaking now, there's a new uh, find in the, um, in the anthropological um, map, as it were, a brand new ape, a modern a homid ape that's, uh, say, modern, far more modern than this guy, a homid ape. I'll report on that later, hopefully. It's one for the anthropologists at the moment. They are deciding where it fits in. But um, I won't, I say I won't mention that one. Uh, just have. But anyway, let's just say we've found this one. Uh, for the moment, I'll come to the new one later. And we're going to skip ahead even a bit again. Now to 3.7 million years ago. Uh, quite modern in sort of geological time, but they have found in Tibet this time. Now Tibet's traditionally one of those places that not many people visit. You don't get an awful lot of research done there. Um, the borders have always been a bit tricky to get through, but they've been out there. And what have they found? They have found um, 3.7 million year old uh, rhinoceros, a woolly rhinoceros um, skeleton, a fossil. This together with other creatures, like some of the big cats, the snow leopards, uh, 
uh, Tibetan antelope, things like this, they have found at this period of time these cold animals that uh, we th see in the ice age that come on, like the woolly rhinoceros in particular. Where did they come from? They seem to have appeared during the modern ice ages. Now the last ice age only disappeared about 10,000 years ago. Where did these creatures come from? They seem to have evolved too quickly. It now seems they may have evolved in Tibet. Uh, the fact is that this particular rhinoceros, a new species slightly smaller than the other woolly rhinoceroses that have been found, it seems that it may have been evolving in this cradle, in this sort of cradle of evolution in Tibet. So when the Ice Ages came, these guys were already adapted to it. And it may seem that many of the Ice Age animals came from this area. Uh, quite an exciting find. Um, woolly rhinos had apparently a bit very big horns. Uh, they didn't actually find the horn on this one, it had rotted away. It's, the horns are generally made of hair and such like, so they didn't actually find the horn. But horns were very useful of course and can be very useful for sort of scooping snow. They can, uh, like a snow scoop, so to get to vegetation underneath. So um, it, it's something that may have developed in this period, this period, this time. But a million years before the Ice Age, in Tibet, there were woolly rhinos, basically evolving. Great stuff. Um, that's about it for today, because I don't want to bore you too much and save something for the next one. Um, hope to see you again soon. And don't forget, old news is good news. Uh, I told you I'd use that again, didn't I? Peace.